and Jerry Lewis with Eve Young, Ray Malone, Danny Arnold, Margaret Dumont, and Mike Mazurki. Presented by the Colgate Tom Olive Beef Company, makers of Halo Shampoo. Cashmere Bouquet Hand Lotion. and Jerry Lewis show. Children, 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 as you know, all this week we've had our little holiday celebration. We've had our parties, our games, and jolly good fun. <laughs> so today we're going to have a wonderful surprise. Oh, oh boy. Boy. I've invited two very famous men to pay us a visit. And I know they're great favorites of yours, and they're coming here to entertain you. So, without further ado, here are your very own favorites, Gene Martin and Jerry Lewis. <laughs> For my partner. Yeah, that's what you think. Get on and leave him alone. I don't know. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Yeah, you did it again, Jerry. You I didn't did do again. not no skin. They're not regular children. Look. <laughs> I'm just want to tell you something right now. I'm going back. I'm going to get dressed for my song. Well, you right. introduce the song. 
and hurry up. I'll hurry. Look, you always stall when you do. No, I Give won't me the rope. stall. Give me the rope. What is it with the rope? What do you got Look, a rope? I'm going. To, I'm going back and I'm going to get ready for the song. Now, what is I'm, the rope for? When I'm dressed and the set is ready, I'll give a jerk like this. That means introduce my song. Oh, all right. Okay. And I think it's silly. It's not. So go ahead, Stella. All you right. introduce. <laughs> Such a silly thing with a rope. Well, all I can say is that we're very happy to be back on television, and we want to say we want to say that we have a wonderful show that we feel is probably one of the slowest moving things you've ever seen. <laughs> laughing because you'll cover my intelligent words. <laughs> I'm not well at all, but uh, I, would like, uh, I would like to tell you a very funny joke uh, that I started, uh, well, I told this joke about three years ago, and it's terrific. It's about two guys, see, and the first guy says to, oh, they're ready uh, to do the number? All right, right, right after this joke, it'll only take a second. These two guys say to this, uh, well, one guy looks at the other and he says, look, pa <laughs> no, right, all right, it, it, it's a quick joke, take a second. So one guy says to the other, all right, one sec, one second, I gotta tell the joke. This one guy says to the other, well, have you this? I said, all right, I don't know. <laughs> Halo Shampoo presents the real inside story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Young lady, you've eaten all the Junior's porridge. And uh, busted his chair. And slept in my bed. Of course. I'm supposed to. I'm Goldilocks. She's not Goldilocks. Her hair isn't pretty. <laughs> Let's wash it and find out. Not with that. Soaping doll's hair. Halo glorifies it. Because Halo shampoo's not a soap or a cream. So it can't leave dulling soap film. Gee, look at the suds. If she's really Goldilocks, Halo shampoo will soon prove it. Now, let's take a look. It, it is, is Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Halo, everybody, Halo. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies your hair. So Halo shampoo, Halo. Remember, soaping dolls hair. Halo glorifies it. Leaves it fragrant, dandruff-free, and wonderfully easy to manage. So, hello, everybody, hello. Hello, shampoo, hello. Hi, this is Margaret Lindsay. You know, you don't have to be a Goldilocks to glorify your hair. No matter what color your hair may be, Halo, with its patented ingredients, leaves hair lustrous and soft and shining from the very first shampoo. Halo Shampoo, America's favorite by far. Well, I can't do it unless my new assistant gets here, see? I'm waiting for my new oh, assistant. You mean there's going to be another lifeguard like you? Well, let's just say there's going to be another lifeguard. someone fearless and courageous, and here I am. Aren't I adorable? <laughs> now, look, now I'm going to teach you how to save a girl from drowning. Oh, yes, I have to know all I'm that. Yes, sir. Watch it. 
Excuse me, little man. Yeah, we're out right. of the way, lady. Now you gotta, you want, you'll swim up to the girl, right? Swim up. Now that you put your hand on the small of her back yeah. and you raise her up out of the water. And you put her arm around here. Now watch yourself because it's, you got, and then you swim away with her. Swim Very away. Nice. Watch you don't choke the other. Swim way. away with her. All the time. Swim Just away. keep swimming away. Swimming away. <laughs> Just remember that's important. To get her and swim away. <laughs> hey, you swim right over to the girl that's well, all right, I'm gonna swim over. Swim over. That's it. <laughs> so what are you doing now? I got tired. I'm float <laughs> All right, now. Okay, I get her here. No, no. Easy. Take oh, your easy. time. Oh, easy. Your... Always take your time when you're about to do something. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no, nice. Take it. Be a gentleman in the water, too. <laughs> <It's a> nice <laughs> thing. Very fine and nice. You put your armor. No, easy. <laughs> delicate when you do All right! So be found in my favor. Okay, I get her around the neck. Go, go. Oh, tell it to the Marine. <laughs> She's an ungrateful wench after I saved her from a perilous doom. <laughs> now, look, I just want to ask you, uh, how, what's, what's your name? Oh, my name is Marvin M. Mert. Mar what's the M for? Marvin. <laughs> Marvin, Marvin Mertz? That's my name, sir. Well, how come to Marvin? How'd you come to this? Well, you see, sir, when I was a child, I was very, very difficult. My mother used to have to yell for supper, that is. Yeah. Marvin! Marvin! Oh! Marvin, oh, Marvin! Marvin. <laughs> what should you rather be called? Marvin? Or Marvin? My friends call me Sidney. Sidney, huh? <laughs> sure. Well, look, Sid, uh, can you swim? Can I? Can I swim? Back away, buddy. I get on that board and I die. <laughs> and it's a backstroke and the flat wheel. And then I get up on the biggest board I can get. And I take a book to crab. <laughs> and a back swing and I flutter and float and I slide along the water. He wants to know, can I swim? <laughs> can you? No, I, I didn't can. think it. <laughs> well, look, now oh, here we are. Do you see what they're doing? Yeah, maybe we can get a game. No! They're not allowed to play. Look, no ball play. Oh! Now go over and you stop them. You're the lifeguard. Stop them from playing. Go That's ahead. part of my job. It's your whole job, Junior. Yeah, but he's pretty big fellow. Makes no difference. Cut him down to your side. Go ahead. You're not allowed to play ball here. <laughs> no! Let him hear you. Go on. No ball player. <laughs> Don't be afraid, go over. Be stern. All right, buddy. <laughs> You're not allowed to play ball on a beat. <laughs> All right, stop with the playing ball on a beat. <laughs> he asked me. All right, let's have the ball right here, buddy. Let's have that ball. Let's have the ball hit. No. All right, Marvin. let's have the ball, buddy. Harvard. Let's get the ball. What? Give me the ball. Give, give me the ball. Somebody's throwing sand at me. Somebody's throwing sand at me? That's a ball, Martin. Give me the ball, buddy. I ain't... Let's have that. Give me the ball. Jim... Will you come here just a second? Now, look, look. I just want to tell you. Let, let, me, tell you. let me tell you something. Look, hold it. Well, excuse me, sir, but uh, you're not allowed to play ball on the beach. Oh, you mean I'm not allowed to play ball on the beach? No. Oh, it's against the law? Yes, sir. Well, uh, do you mind if I play on the other side? No, go right ahead. Thank you. Okay, my way here, then. See? Now look. Now look. What I'll... is he, one of your Italian friends? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, you listen to me. We didn't rehearse that. <laughs> look, here, here's what I want you to do. Yeah? I want you... Ooh. <laughs> I want you to go home. Why, because you saw a beautiful girl, Laura? I can see her as well as you saw her. I'm a lifeguard, and I'm entitled to look upon her as well as you. <laughs> Go get some lunch. Oh, yes, my dad baked the lunch, and he made all these beautiful goodies. I'll get it. Okay. <laughs> Hello, baby. Hiya, handsome. Uh, I would just, uh... I'd better break this up before he loses his appetite. <laughs> <laughs> 
I see that. Uh, well, the goodies are ready. Let's have one, sir. What do you say? Don't you know the three is a crowd? You're right. Get lost, baby. Get going. <laughs> Go on. Get out of here. Of all the idiotic things I've never... What is this? Well, there wasn't enough for her, you and I. It's just you and I, and we'll have a blended rendezvous together. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't look like it's going to hold enough for two people. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. We have some of the most wonderful food you've ever seen. And my daddy packs everything for me. He does? And makes everything for me. He's my daddy. Good. We have one. He's been working and, and, and slaving to make delicious food for my picnic. Crazy. He's a wonderful man. Crazy. Daddy's been cooking for me ever since they took mother away. <laughs> this is a joke, let's face it. <laughs> Look at these. Aren't they delicious? Nutritious bananas. They're good for you. Sure. Very good. And we're going to have a wonderful time here, just you and I. Look at all this wonderful food. That <laughs> we have a lot of wonderful goodies, a lot of terrific things that Daddy prepared for us. Look at all the for our salad. And we have enough here for salad, grape for juice, beef for juice, soup for soup. Come back, friend. You <laughs> and me and you. Oh, we have wonderful goodies. Oh, mayonnaise, that's good for the salad. La, la, la. some other stuff. Dad, you didn't have to come along. <laughs> Somebody is drowning. I'll go and save them. I say somebody is drowning. I'm going to save them. Permission, I'm your apprentice. Tell me to drown. You're gonna have to tell me to save him, sir. Someone's drowning. Here we go. All right, go ahead, save him. I can't swim. <laughs> oh, look at this, sir. Look, this oh, man is in bad shape. He's okay. He just swallowed a lot of water. A lot of water, yeah. Swallowed a lot of water. Okay, we'll put a Oh on. my goodness gracious, sir. Look at him. Oh. That's what you get for going into the water after eating lunch. You should wait a while. <laughs> Never go in the water nah. after eating lunch. <laughs> now, this man, he's got a lot of water. Now, you need a little artificial respiration. What do you think of artificial respiration? It'll never take the place of the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta give him some artificial... artificial, artificial. Yeah, respiration. but don't you think he should be on his belly? <laughs> well, this is a new way. Oh, a new way. Yeah. You go, you just put your hands right here and you, you press hard. You know, give him some air in the lungs and the water will come out. You, go ahead, you try. Me? Yeah. I don't even know him. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. Gus, this is Marvin. Hello, Gus. How are you? Artificial respiration. Right. Yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> You press too hard. Do it lightly. Do it lightly. Yes. Yeah. I did it too hard. Yeah. Lightly. <laughs> you don't see. Uh, 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 you don't see to understand. Do it lightly. Lightly. Yes. Lightly. Look, watch. Watch me for the while. Watch. Look. Oh. Lightly. Be my guest. <laughs> now it's funny. <laughs> The poor cat. Look, you're very nice. You're very nice. <laughs> this kid's spitting up a storm. Try a very light. Yeah, very light. You all righty? <laughs> no, I don't 
understand. <laughs> No, you don't know how to do it. Lemme, you should have been here when I taught him. <laughs> now, look, here's the idea of the whole thing. You just get back and... <laughs> is whiter without bleaching than any other product known with bleach in the wash water. Good day, ma'am. Have you tried this new improved fab? My customers sure go for the way fab washes clothes whiter without bleaching than any other suds with bleaching. Now you take Mrs. Jeb, who has four active kids to wash for. She was telling me that fab gets her big wash whiter without bleaching than any other suds she's used with the bleach in the wash water. Everybody says Fab is so terrific, I'm taking some home to the missus. How about you, ma'am? Mrs. Robert Young, Harrison, New York, tried Fab. Here's what she says. I'm going to hang up what often seems like the biggest wash in the state of New York. You know, with these two youngsters, my family wash is no joke. I always had to use a bleach. Then I found out you don't need bleach when you use Fab. So now, Fab washes our clothes whiter without bleaching than any suds I've ever used with a bleach in the wash water. Next wash day, try Colgate's new Fab. Much. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'd like to say you've been very wonderful to us throughout our last season. We've been very, very happy and thrilled to appear on your Colgate Comedy Hour. We'd like to make mention of the fact right about here that uh, our new picture... I better fix this so you can all see it, huh? Our new picture, Stella Beware, opens in 600 and some odd theaters tomorrow night for a preview to the United States. And then at the end of January, Stella Beware will be shown throughout the country for your consumption. On behalf of Mr. Hal Wallace, Dean, and myself, we should like very much to thank the silent service. That is the submarine service for their very wonderful cooperation and helping us make Sailor Beware. It's a pretty funny picture, we kind of think, and we think you may like it, and we'd like you to go see, see it and look for it at your neighborhood theater. My tongue got in the way of my eye tooth, and I'm so nervous. Heavens to Betsy knows what's going to come out. <laughs> but once again, uh, did you hear, Mr. Wallace, the way we said it night? Nice? You'll give us the money now, like you promised. <laughs> Would you like to introduce... Fellows standing out in the audience going like this, see? People don't want to applaud, but there's some fellow with an earphone and an eyepiece, and he goes, come on. <laughs> Very silly business. But we'd like to present a young lady, ladies and gentlemen, who, in our humble opinion, is one of the brightest stars to come along the show business horizon in many a year. Dean and I auditioned her. We should say we listened to her and liked her so very much that we thought we would present her to you for your approval. Along with a gentleman who's been in television for some time, a guy who played the Copeland in New York with us, Mr. Ray Malone. We'd like very much to present Miss Eve Young, Ray Malone, and their consumption, and to their consumption, and their uh, Ray Malone and Eve Young and their complaints. Uh, here they are, boy. Yes, sir. There's nothing like being nervous. That's one thing. Other performers are nervous. When it comes to me, I know what I'm doing. And anyhow. <laughs> You know, ladies, I don't have to tell you that after doing your daily household chores, your hands often get so rough and dry, they almost feel like sandpaper. Isn't that right? 
Yes, you know that. But here's something you may not know. Cashmere bouquet hand lotion can make your sandpaper hands feel smooth and caressable and do it in just 10 seconds. Now, here's why. Cashmere bouquet absorbs like a lotion. It softens like a cream and then dries fast without stickiness. Just watch. Put a drop of lotion on your hand in just 10 seconds and you can have smoother, younger-looking skin with lotion made with lanolin. Cashmere bouquet. Mmm, smooth. Mmm, caressable. Why not see for yourself tomorrow how in just 10 seconds even sandpaper hands feel caressable. Thanks to Cashmere Bouquet Hand Lotion with the fragrance men love. For sandpaper hands, use Cashmere Bouquet Hand Lotion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very happy show, and it's a comedy show, but I'm very sad. I'm very, very sad because my Aunt Jean in Brooklyn just called me. And she's very sad because our family, well, we're very clannish, and we love one another, see? And I had an Uncle Louie a long time ago that I never met that was missing some 30 years ago. Oh, this is no joke. And we miss him very much, especially the older folks in the family, and they asked if I could utilize television, because there's 50 million listeners, to ask them if they ever saw my Uncle Louie, they should call me on the phone and tell me. Or maybe send a wire or write a letter. I'll show you his picture. Uncle Louie. We love Uncle Louie, and we'd love to find him. And if anyone ever saw him, and, and you recognize him from this picture, please call us or wire us or write us and let us know. This is my Uncle Louie. He's a very sweet man, my uncle. <laughs> Don't laugh, because he's a nice fellow, uncle. <laughs> so if any of you people ever saw this man, please wire, phone, or write me, collect, or however you want to do it. And we don't care what it costs, but we must find him for the benefit of the family. Now that I took care of that, on with the show. I would like very much to... Excuse yes. me, sir. There's a telephone call for you. Oh, my heavens, it might be about my Uncle Louie, huh? Thank you, Skippy. Hello? He 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 hello? Yes? You know my Uncle Louie? Oh, you do really? Oh, yes, I'd pay anything to find him, I swear. Oh, yes, I would. $20,000. <laughs> for a brother, maybe, but for an uncle, <laughs> no. $20,000? $20, all right, I'll pay it. I'll send it over to the Birdie Wheel Bank in the morning. Yeah, all right, $20,000. Tell me, where's my Uncle Louie? Where? 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 <laughs> all right, thank you very much. I'm so happy I found him. I'll call my Aunt Gina and tell her. Thank you very much. I found my Uncle Louie. Thank you. Uncle Louie! <laughs> Kind. Uh, I've had a very special request to repeat a number that I did on uh, the last TV show called uh, Coma Bella Bella Bima. So, Richard, if you don't mind. Marco. Hey, Pine Top, come here. <laughs> Do you happen to know what you just did? Yeah, I was helping you with the number. Did you hear me play it? Yeah, you was helping me. Yeah, I helped you with the whole number. I was playing with the... I had a special request to do this number. Oh, well, I helped you, Dean. Why did you help me? You lost the whole thing up. Uh, Why do you insist on doing these things to me? <laughs> He's fooling around. You see? I know. <laughs> fooling around. I mean this. Oh, no, because I just did that for fun so everyone could hear the way I play. No, not for fun. Yeah, I did it, Dean. No, th this is it. What? This is the whole thing. No, well, you mean... No, that... you and I, we're through. This is it. We're through. What? All finished. He's fooling. I'm not fooling, Curly. This is it. <laughs> what, what? No, he kids around. I'm not kidding around. We're through. Hand in your equipment. <laughs> Give 
Give me a cup. <laughs> Your time. Your salary. <laughs> Your tap shoes. All right. Go. Wait a second. Your trumpet. My trumpet. Your trumpet. Not my trumpet, then. Give me the trumpet. I just want to... Give me the trumpet, will you, Harry? Give me the trumpet. Once more, before I give me. All right. Once more. Ah. <laughs> I think I'm going to sing about three or four little numbers that we hope you won't mind. Excuse me, Dean. I've been with you and Jerry for the past three and a half years. Yeah, it's nice, nice, good. But I've never seen you do anything like this before, this little kid. Oh, he's happy. He doesn't like to work he's anyhow. He's happy? Yeah. What do you mean by treating him like that? Well, I didn't think it would hurt so much. Didn't I didn't think it would hurt. No. This poor kid is heartbroken. Well, I... Gee. What right have you got to do a thing like that? Well, he's bothering me. I Bothering you? Yeah. He's probably trying to do away with himself. Well, gee, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't He's know. the sweetest little kid in the world. He loves you very dearly, and you treat him like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. What can I I'm do? I'm so proud. What can you do? That's all you think. What can I do? Yeah, well... Now you think of it, don't you? Well... This poor kid. He's probably going to do a lot of wrong things now. Yeah, he's unhappy. I see how unhappy he is. Believe me, I'm very glad because it's going to be a tough winter. Yeah, I know you're glad, too, and I know why. You know why I'm glad? Yes, I do. Okay, why? Cause a good man nowadays is hard to find. You said it, Tony. been all right. Yeah. Seriously, ladies and gentlemen, Dean and I received the wire. <laughs> Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, Colgate Comedy Hour, El Capitan Theater, Hollywood. We have just learned that you are making an appeal for the victims of muscular dystrophy on television tonight. Our 250 children in wheelchairs will be watching you. They send you their loving thanks, and thank you so much for being so wonderful to them. Frank Collins, Chicago Chapter, MDA. We'd like very much to say that this is a very, very worthy cause and a very, very difficult cause. There is no cure. There is no cause. They need money very, very badly within the next two months. If you could find it in your hearts to send just something to help children who may die any day. It's 21 East 40th Street, New York, 16, New York. 21 East 40th Street, New York, 16, New York. Help Where these you, kids. You just imagine if, you know, there's supposed to be about 40, at least 40 million people watching this show. Now, you imagine if just every person would just send in one penny, what would happen? It would be wonderful. It would help a lot of children. One penny. Do that for yourselves. Do it for us, because we all love children. We all have them. You've been wonderful to us. We thank God that we can work for you and for such wonderful people. Donald O'Connor. Next week. Good night. God bless you. Good night. The Colgate Comedy Hour has been presented by Halo Shampoo. Cashmere Bouquet Hand Lotion. Ajax Cleanser. 
and twelve, the new wash day does it. The Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis Company, produced and directed by Ernest D. Glutton. Television director, Kingman T. Moore. NBC production supervisor, Sam Fuller. Written by Ed Simmons and Norman Lear. Musical director, Dick Stabile. Choreography by Ray Malone. Art director, Bert Ullman. Costumes by Kate Drain Lawson. Casting director, Howard Ross. Associate NBC supervisor, Robert D. Madden. Associate TV director, Arthur Penn. Assistant to the producer, Bob Henry. Technical director, Ross Miller. Audio engineer, Harold Clark. Lighting by Al Scarlett. The Colgate Plumber Repeat Company invites you to listen to Mr. and Mrs. North on radio every Tuesday night and strike a bridge on TV every Wednesday night. And be sure and tune in again next week at the same time when the Colgate Comedy Hour will star Donald O'Connor with his special guests, Harpo Marx and Marie McDonald. And two weeks from tonight, Abbott and Costello will be your stars. And their guests will be Errol Flynn, Rhonda Fleming, and Bruce Cabot. And three weeks from tonight, Eddie Cantor will be back again. Now, good night for the Colgate Comedy Hour, which has been presented by the Colgate Pomelo Tea Company, makers of quality products since 1806.